Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sands of Vool, and in this tutorial we're going to make a range of tavern scatter, including goblets, wine glasses, vases and tankards of various descriptions. So we've got our tavern table here and we want to add some scatter to it. So let's just get straight on and go with a goblet to begin with, because it's going to show us the basics of a lot of the things we're going to use. Now you've got a couple of options here. Firstly, you can shift an A and bring in a cube. Now we don't want a whole cube, we want a single vertex. So you can just go into vertex mode. I'm using machine tools there. If you don't have machine tools, just click tab and then one or the button up here after you press tab. And then we can press A to select all of them, M, and then we want to merge at center. And that's gonna give us a single vertex which we can work off. I'm just gonna delete that. The other option is if you go to edit preferences and then you come to your add-ons and type in extra and you click this add mesh extra objects, it'll give you the option when you press shift and A to add for mesh just a single vert. So either way works perfectly fine and into vertex mode. So we're gonna need a flat bottom for this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is press E and then X to keep this trapped on the X axis, drag it out to however wide we want it to be. And then I'm gonna press E do something there at like an angle. Now I'm looking at this from a 3D printing perspective, so I'm gonna make this a bit thicker than maybe it would be if you weren't 3D printing. And then from that point, we want to just do a curve. So I'm gonna press control and then right click to set a vertex as each point. So we'll make the stem of our glass here or our goblet. And a wine glass and a goblet are basically the same thing. They just emphasize different parts of the shape. And then we're gonna make the main part here where the liquid would go, E and X, so that's perfectly in line with the top and then we're going to carry on with the control and right click do you note it is right click and not left click and just because i find it useful i'm trying to keep these relatively the same as the vertices on the other side and then we're going to need one more and we're going to want it exactly above the origin which at the moment is on if i just come out into object mode the first vertex so i'm going to control and right click approximately there what i'm going to do is turn on my snapping make sure it's set to vertices and then with that selected i'm just going to press g x so now it's locked on the x-axis and as soon as i come down to that bottom vertex which we know is perfectly on the origin and click it's going to be aligned to that but only on the x-axis then we can just go into object mode add modifier and we want a screw modifier and you'll see straight away that's made a very respectable looking goblet now we could leave it there or we could try to make it a bit smoother if we wanted to. If we are going to do that, what we want to do is apply this. So here and apply. And then I'm going to go into edge mode there. I'm going to press Alt to select the bottom edge there and then Shift and Alt to select that one there. And I'm going to press Shift and E and go to the side and that's going to turn these red or this pinky whatever color you'd call this. You can also do this if you press N to bring out the end panel. And while you've got those selected, Let's just do that again and go to item. What we've done here is increase our mean crease to one. You can see you can do that here as well. So entirely up to you, you could do that here and just type in one as well. And once you've done that, if you go back into object mode and press control and two to add in a subdivision surface, you can see we've smoothed everything out quite nicely. And that mean crease at the bottom has kept these sharp. Let's just shade flat so we can see that and see what that's done. Now, the other thing you might want to do is you might want to do this to the top edges here. So for example, if I click that one and then Alt Shift that one, again, Shift and E, you can see this working in real time. And you don't have to go the full way, you could do it partly. So you've still got a slight rounded edge or go fully sharp. It depends what you want this to be made of. And then Object, and then we've got that done. And at the moment, we've still got the subdivision surface over here, so we can up that if we want to make this particularly smooth. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. I'm gonna bring that down to about three, and then let's move that over here. So that's our wine glass or goblet made. So hopefully that shows how useful that screw modifier is, and we are gonna use that for our vase, and we're gonna do basically the same thing. So I've just sped up exactly the same process here. I don't think you need to see the same thing twice. Except for this time, I'm not going to try and create the inside. The reason for that is, as opposed to our goblet, where we've got this stem where liquid wouldn't go into it, in the case of a vase, it would go all the way down. So we don't need to worry about this internal bit. You could do this bit as well, but we really don't need to if we just add our modifier and our screw modifier once more. And then if we make that smaller, just so we can see the other modifiers, if we go to add modifier, and then we just add in a solidify modifier, this will add our thickness 
we just need to move our thickness up. So we've got something there. And that means that we've got this going all the way down and we can see right into that. Again, for 3D printing, do bear in mind how thick you want this to be. For example, I'd want this to be at least 1.5 millimeters. And let's turn that from negative to positive so it is going inside. So we've got that object there as well. Similar thing, I'm going to press Control and 2, do a subdivision surface to make it nice and smooth. But we do, well, it's actually up to you if you would want to smooth over the corners here. If we do edge mode, and you'll notice we do need to apply the screw modifier before we have good access to this. I mean, you can do it with the vertex. So for example, we could put a vertex crease there, but you'll notice that causes a lot of problems. It doesn't look right. So let's put that back to zero. Let's come out of edit mode, apply, and then we can go to edge. And if we want to, we can shift an E to make that nice and flat. Again, depends on if you want that to be perfectly flat or not. Now there are some other fun things that we can do with this. Let's just G and put that over there next to our wine glass. And we're gonna shift and D and make a duplicate of it. Let's bring that over here. And what we're gonna do is get rid of our subdivision surface just for now. And then we're going to add a different modifier, this time a simple deform modifier. And we're gonna change that twist from being on the X axis to being on the Z axis. And you can see now that we've got this slight twisting curve that we can increase for our sides and we can do some really fun stuff with that for example if i just go into isolation mode and let's just apply the solidify modifier first because otherwise we're going to find things a little bit annoying and then what we can do is go into face mode and we can start selecting some of these faces now you could use the method of, of clicking alt but that's going to select everything there and into the middle which is going to get really annoying to unselect so actually what i'm going to do is select the bottom face and then control click the top shift control shift control and so on. And if you want to see these as they actually are, you can always select this button up here, which is the on cage button, and you'll see that exactly as it is. And then what we're gonna to do to make this vase look a little bit cooler and a little bit more ornate, probably not being found in a tavern, let's be honest, but either way, we can either come over here and change what would normally be from extrude region to extrude long normals, and then that will allow you to extrude these out perfectly. You can also do the same thing if I just undo that. If you've got hard opt, you can press Q and then alt click on EM macro and that will allow you to drag that out as well. So just a little bit somewhere there. And then we're gonna have one thing that we need to deal with and that's because of this movement along the normals, you'll notice that it's now not all level. So I'm gonna go into vertex mode, Y, shift and Z to go into X-ray mode, grab all those ones at the bottom and S, Z and zero, which will scale everything to zero on that axis. So quite quick way of doing that. If I undo that, if you've got machine tools, it's even easier. You just press Alt A and go up and then you've got those all aligned to the top ones. So even quicker there. So now we've got that nicely aligned. And again, we want to go into edge mode, grab all of these ones along the bottom edge. In fact, I'm just gonna shift and Z again and grab all of them. And then we're gonna want to press shift and E, drag that to the side and then control and two. And we've got a nice, interesting looking vase. We do have a slight problem at the bottom here. If I go to vertex mode, and that's because the twist feature here has made a separate section. It's made multiple of those. So to fix that, all we need to do is go into vertex mode A, M, and then click by distance. And then that's gonna merge all those multiple copies at the center. So we then do away with that problem. And we've got our interesting vase. So there we go. And obviously you could change how hard or sharp these little ridges are. Entirely up to you. So let's G and X and move that to the side. So the last one we're gonna do is a tankard. For this, I wouldn't actually bother using the screw modifier. I'd just press Shift A, Mesh and bring in a cylinder. I think doing more than that is just a waste of your time. Let's come in here. I'm gonna up that to, let's say 64. S to make that a bit bigger. Let's G and put that there. That's S and Z to make it a bit bigger on the Z axis. And then you can start forming your tankard shape as you normally would. So I might just come in, grab those vertices there, S to scale them in a little bit, maybe G and Z to bring those down so it's a bit more dumpy. And then Control and R, let's bring in an edge loop. Let's put one there and Control and B to bevel that out. Let's do the same thing again, somewhere down there, Control and B to bevel that out. And then I'm gonna go into face mode, Alt select those, Shift Alt select those. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Let's do it this way over here with the extrude feature and just make that a little bit wider, something like this. So that could be like our bands that are holding it together or some sort of additional detailing. 
go into face mode, let's I, let's come back over here, I to inset that, and then E to extrude that down. Shift and Z, let's have a look at that. G, Z, bring that down to, let's say, there, and then we'll just S to scale that out. There we go, we've got our tankard, but we want it to have a handle. This looks a bit boring. So there's a few ways we could do this. Now, the easiest way would be to just bring in something like Shift and A, mesh, bring in a cube, S to scale that down. Let's put it somewhere there. As I move this around, I must have move this off zero. So let's put this back in a Y of zero. So we've got it nice and side on, and then, Let's just do something like start there, go into face mode, select that face, and we can still use our control and right click technique here to bring that into a handle. And then we can either smooth that out. For example, we could just, if we isolate that, grab that edge, that edge, those ones there, and then the same on the other side, shift and E to crease the edges and then back into object mode, control and two, and we've got a nice smooth looking handle. So that's one option, fairly easy. Let's just G and move those to the side. The other option we can do, if we want something a little bit more ornate, is we could go around and start trying to do some nice twisty pattern here with our handle. I'm just gonna shift and D to bring in another version of this, but trying to do some like curvy, twisty thing, bring in a cube again and try that if we go to face mode and then we control and right click and do something like, I don't know, that. I mean, it'll be okay, but it's a bit of a pain. We don't need to do it either because Blender will do this for us. If we go to edit preferences again and for our add-ons, notice we typed in extra, we click on our extra curve objects this time then we get this option of curve, and you get this option down here of a curly curve. And if you click on that, we're gonna to need to see this from the top down. So let's click on Z, and let's just isolate this for a second. You can see what that's done. It's made a perfect curled round curve. And you can, if I press F9 to bring up the operator of that, you can change this around a little bit. Um, most of the time I would do this by hand. So back out of isolation mode, we want it in object mode, R to rotate that around, 90, and then R, Z, let's rotate that round. Let's go that way, 90, and then G, and we can S to scale that up, and if we need to, we can rotate it till we can put that on our tankard, something like that. And then this is really easy to play around with. If we just come down here to our object data properties, and if you come down to where it says geometry, oh, if you do want to make this smoother, you can up this by doing the resolution and that will add in more points between each of, if I go to edit mode, each of these, so it makes it smoother. And then go into geometry, and we've got a couple of ways of doing this depending on what you want. For example, we can just extrude this out so we have something that's maybe quite wide and then we could go into the modifiers and just add a solidify modifier so that we've got that, something like that. So that would be perfectly acceptable as an option. Let's rotate that a bit more, just put that somewhere like there. The other thing that we can do, which starts to look a little bit more ornate, if we just get rid of this solidify modifier, we come down here and we, start looking at our bevel, what we can do is we could change the depth of our bevel and that will start adding this like round additional part to this. Notice it doesn't make a full circle here, so you're still gonna have to do something like a solidify modifier and that's basically rounding the edges that we had of our flat object. So I can bring this extrude down to make the flat part in the middle less wide. And this will look like a little bit more of an interesting formed metal shape. So we can see what that looks like there. Now we can, we again go into isolation mode, add here a solidify modifier. Now, one thing I should mention is at the moment, this is actually a curve still. So it's kind of good practice if you want to 3D print this to actually get rid of that modifier convert this by right clicking and going to mesh to convert it to a mesh so now you've got access to this and then at that point go to add modifier solidify and start doing your solidification now with that you will notice as we start to do this if we make this very thick you're going to start getting these points where some of the vertices are going to get very if i just shade this flat very close together so for example here we're definitely getting some issues I mean, it's not gonna be the biggest problem until you go too far. As soon as you have something like that, this is going to cause a lot of problems. So you generally want to pay attention to that and maybe avoid that if at all possible. I mean, you can fix it 
if you go there and then apply, you can access the vertices, which you can see in x-ray mode, and you can start joining these together. For example, I could click there, 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 and then press M at last to merge at last. So you can do that, but you're gonna be, well, it's gonna take you quite some time to do that all the way around here. So it's just gonna get a little bit tedious. I personally wouldn't bother. I would just make sure I didn't screw it up in the first place. So somewhere like that. So there we go. Rotate that around again so it looks like it's at the right point. Something about there. And we've got a much more interesting looking tankard. Maybe something a little bit more ornate. So there we go. A range of wine glasses or goblets, phases, tankards of various different styles for you to put in your tavern or bar scene. If you aren't subscribed already, please do for more great content and have a great day, guys.